on, sing it from the bottom of your heart. Sometimes you just so out cherry, so out cherry. One more time, one more time. Sing it from the bottom of your heart. I'll cherish, I'll cherish the old. upon us help us to respond to it knowing it doesn't satisfy you if we don't do what we're supposed to do thank you for our pastor thank you for putting these words in his mouth thank you for we see the burden that you have in your heart being displayed by how you have spoken to us this morning and our response to you is, we say yes to that call. We say yes to that responsibility. We say yes to preach to that person we have neglected. We say yes to that body in our hearts to go out there and speak forth the words that Jesus wants us to speak. We give you praise, we give you glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's have our seats. Change you someday for a crown, amen. Um, so our pastor gave me a responsibility to um, because someone might be sitting there saying, Okay, I want to preach. Um, this burden, I have said yes, but how do I do it? All right, so that's why we have this. And let me quickly say that. I remember one of the days I was going out of the house very early in the morning. I had something, an appointment to catch up with, around five. And just within the estate, I saw, I saw a woman preaching. And, you know, she was shouting, don't wear trousers. If you wear trousers, you'll go to hell. Uh, these are things that many of us would listen to and say, look at her, look at what she's preaching. But there was a question God laid in my heart. Why is it that those of us who know the right things, we don't step out? The ones that are more responsive are the ones that will come there and teach people the wrong things. So our revelations are good for our jotters and to hoop in church. But they die with us. So let's, how to preach the gospel. Next slide. Introduction. 1 Corinthians 9 verse 16 says, For you see, even though I proclaim the good news, I can't take the credit for my labors. For I am compelled to fulfill my duty by completing this work. It will be an agony to me if I did not constantly preach the gospel. Right? So, Paul is saying here that God wants us to know that preaching the gospel is our duty. It's your duty. When you do something that is your duty, you don't expect credit for it. When you do something that is your duty, Jesus says, after you have done your duty, count yourself as what? An unprofitable servant. You've done what you're supposed to do. So say to yourself, preaching of the gospel is my responsibility. Please say that with conviction. Preaching of the gospel is my responsibility. Next slide. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20 says, say, We are ambassadors of the anointed one who carry the message of Christ to the world as though God were tenderly pleading with them directly through our lips. 
So we tenderly plead with you on Christ's behalf, turn back to God and be reconciled to him. So when it comes to the preaching of the gospel, God is limited by our action or our inaction. When the angel came before Peter, right, and spoke to him, he came before Cornelius. He told him, he said, I, I don't have the right to teach this thing. You go and call. I just came from heaven. I just, God just sent me. But me seeing God does not qualify me to preach. I still depend on a man to do the job. So God said, go call Peter. How many times has God called you? Called Sheung. I don't know who is Sheung here, so I'm calling names. I don't know. Called Ekaite. <laughs> Called all of those persons. And God has given you a prompting and you didn't go. And there are many, many Corneliuses that would have been turned to Christ today. But because we've chosen not to say anything, they wallow in their dirt. It says, God's joy is to see the whole world he died for reconciled to him. You know, God didn't die for Christians. He didn't die for the righteous ones. He died for the whole world. That's an investment that God expects that he expects to reap the whole world. Don't mind those things. People will tell you that few persons will make it to heaven. God's intention is that the whole world will be one to him. And it won't just happen automatically. We have a responsibility. Next slide. Next slide, sir. Why we preach the gospel. Number one, number one reason why we preach the gospel is we've been commanded to do so. You could take time to read those um, references there. Two is, there is a heaven to gain and a hell to lose. Like it or not, your good brother, good mother, good father, good friend, very moral, does not sin, does not smoke, does not drink, is going to hell. It's just a good sinner that is destined for hell. Three is, we must strive to love our neighbor as much as we love ourselves. If God saved you and you know that that's the best decision you've made, you have the responsibility to, commun to com um, communicate the same thing to others. To remain in silence, James 4 verse 17 says, To him that knoweth what is good to do and does it not, to him it is what? Hello? It is what? A sin. So tell your neighbor, if you don't preach the gospel, you're living in sin. <laughs> don't be, a, it's Pastor Anselm that told you, tell that person, if you don't preach the gospel, you're living in sin. I, I can see by our responses that many of you are sinners. Next one, it says, evangelism is one practical usage of what, of what we have in Christ. We don't have the time. It says, it pushes us to search and know the Bible better. Some of you, some of the reasons why you don't know the scripture is because there is no responsibility placed upon you. You know? If you know you have a responsibility to teach. One of the things that made me start, I started teaching a family cell of people who were close to three times my age when I was 18. The first time I stood before them, I was shaking. But because I, that was my response, I had to teach them every Sunday. I started searching the scriptures. So it will do you good. Next slide, please. Mediums for preaching the gospel. So there are mediums. Number one is one-on-one -on -one evangelism. See, this is not old school. I remember say, I'm not sure they, they still do it again. It is, it is you that have told yourself that you can't do it. You can't. People preach in, in, in eateries, right? You just sit down. If pay for somebody's food. Don't go there and I was I went to pick up my um, my clothes from yesterday from the dry cleaners and I saw a, a man was basically harassing a lady in the name of preaching the gospel. I was almost tempted to stop him. He was pursuing up and down. That's harassment. You know, but we will laugh now as we should do. But you know the right approach. When did you do it? Those who were laughing have stopped laughing. Number two is group evangelism. Now, I would, 
the first time I preached to someone one-on-one -on -one was because I went with someone. So what happened was, first time I actually preached to someone one-on-one, -on -one, I preached in Yoruba language. So what happened was, I went with an older person and she had preached to two persons. So my responsibility was to open the Bible for the person while she's preaching. But as God will have it, we now met somebody who didn't understand English. And I've been drumming Yoruba in her ear. So she told me, she said, I, you see now, as it stands like this, I can't do anything. So you preach to the person. That's when you know that God has prepared you. You are ju you just not put yourself in an environment where you can be used. He says when you open your mouth, you, you do what? He would feel it. Number three, through social media is free. All those time you use in posting people's cars that are not yours. Yeah, because most times when you see somebody snapping behind a car, it's not their own. Nobody will explain their plate number on, on Facebook for sake of posting pictures. All those times you use him. I'm not saying you shouldn't post. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying you can use that time, or that investment, you can use it in preaching Jesus. With some of you, we can't go through your wall and tell that you're a Christian. If, if you doubt me now, I, I will, will check. We can't go through your, your and see that you are a Christian. What you post has no semblance of the Jesus you say you are a part of. People should be able to go through your wall and just be, become Christians just by the things you post. I'm not saying that should be all that you do. If you are somebody who... I encouraged him. You know, he said, no work. I said, okay, this is what you can do. Get shoes here and all that. So he started selling shoes online. I'll go through his WhatsApp status. He will post like seven programs and one picture of a shoe. So I told him, I said, you are not being serious. That's, this is not wisdom. You have program, program, program of different ministries that if people go, they most likely get confused because they don't know where they stand any longer. Then you have just two pictures of the shoe you're selling. That's not wisdom. So I'm not saying everything you post out there should be, right? If you have a business and all of that, but by all means, preach Jesus. Number four, through our lives. Amen. Let people see Jesus through your life. Has someone observed you and come to, and, and told you, please, how, why are you like this? Not for bad reasons. Someone just tells you, there has to be something different to your life. Right? Personally, I, I don't like, it's all this uh, pastor, Anselm. So, where I go to do my laundry, every time I go there, I just, you know, just talk. Let's talk as human beings. Until one day, the lady said, I don't know, like she saw a video on social media and said, you're a pastor. I said, yes. Said, ah, no wonder without preaching right that should be our testimony number five through partnering with gospel-based programs and organizations we have faith seminar coming up that's one of the ways you help the gospel to spread like our pastor said a lot of money goes into pushing you know some of you are ah, if we do a fly and that is not very sweet you say this thing is not fine they didn't do it well here but you don't know that to get excellence money huh? there are some persons you won't capture if we come here we have to hit mike seven times mike will do yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a person will just look at you and say you're not serious because they are they are used to being in organizations where excellence is the key word so if they come to your church and it's not there before they begin to listen to what you, you've already put them off. So partner. They are missionaries also. You can partner with. Right? Number six. Through opportunity provided by the working of miracles through the life of the believer. Right? You see that um, in Acts 3. When Peter met the man at the gate called Beautiful. It was after they had done a miracle that what happened. People gathered and they began to preach. So there's nothing wrong with miracles. They, don't take one side of what our pastor said. God actually made it possible for the believers to do miracles. But the chief reason why he gave it to us is to reach the unsaved. Amen. Lastly, through ministry outreach, outreaches and programs. Next slide. 
Now, note that none of this media should be practiced exclusively or at the neglect of the other. So it won't say, because I do preaching on social media, I won't do one-on-one. -on -one. No. It is, believers should be open to use whatever means works best for every what given situation. Next slide. What is the content of the message of the gospel? So now that I know how to preach, now that I know the mediums to use, what should be my content? This is necessary because many people, next slide, I just explained why that is necessary. Acts 4 verse 12, it says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Next slide. Next slide. Please go back. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. I think there's a part we missed out. The content of the gospel is that Jesus died, was punished, resurrected, he ascended, and because of that, by faith in, his, in what he has done, we are saved. It, is, it has nothing to do about don't wear trousers, don't smoke, don't drink, all of that. The message of, if you read the book of Acts and every time the apostles preached, there was nothing that had to do with their personal lives in the message they preached. Check. Everything they said was about Jesus. Acts chapter 8, where Philip talked about, uh, spoke to um, the Ethiopian Union, it was Jesus. Jesus is enough message. If we exclude you and leave only Jesus, it's more than enough. The next slide, I think that should be about the last one. Who can preach the gospel? Pastors only? No. Every believer has this responsibility of preaching the gospel. So don't say, I'm not called into ministry. You are called. That's what our pastor just told us now. Lastly, the last slide. In conclusion, um, then said he unto his disciples, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. Um, Jesus is banking on us to reach the world with the message of his love. It is time for you to stand up and be counted. Amen. Let us run with this mindset and do all that God expects us to do for 